Ilento esi kolelo ayo ende kumele ibona gazi. Turn with me to the book of First Corinthians chapter one. Si funde imoti ba se Corinthians yoka la chapter one. talk about the power of the cross of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The power of the cross of Jesus. Amanda was Pamba Noska Christ. Have you ever asked yourself a question? Why most of accidents happen in an intersection? Is it because people are failing to stop? Why most of the accidents happen in a crossroad? Is it a mistake? What is a crossroad? Is a cross is that has been made a road. Is Intersection. Intersection is still a cross. But it has the robots. robot. And cars, some of them they fail to stop. Corinthians chapter, first Corinthians chapter one. I would like to read it from verse 10. But the pointing to 18. The subsection or heading here it, it says sectarianism is sin. What is sectarianism? Okay, you'll get it out of the context. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unity of mind. Unity of perception or judgment. He's saying let there be because he's dealing with sectarianism. Groupings divisions the church of Corinth it was a bit complicated it had all kinds of things they will baptize people on behalf of the already dead people with, with the mind that uh, those people will be saved through an action of the one who is still alive. They will vibrate, for example, through speaking in tongues. So they will abuse the gift of talking in tongues. And all kinds of things were happening. So it is, there was clicks. And he's addressing that. So in then verse 11 says, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of close household, that there are contentions among you. There was a strife amongst you. 12, he says, Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, 
or I am or Christ. That is the sectarianism that was taking place in the church of Corinth. Verse 13 says, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Today, we see this sectarianism coming in a form of church names. People are no longer associating themselves with Jesus Christ. They associate themselves by the church you go to. Number two, by the pastor who leads the church. And also when we invite people, we are now inviting people to the church or inviting people to a man or a woman. Christ has faded away. So people when the pastor is not, on a, is not around in church on Sunday, some of them if they normally attend two services, definitely that day it will be one. If they discover before they attend, then they are absent because of belonging to that one. If there are pastors in the church, it goes according to who is preaching today. So I will attend that one because it's my favorite. We don't look at what is coming out of the mouth of a human being. God can use a donkey. He can use a stone. He can use a human being. What matters is what is coming out of the mouth. It's not who is speaking. Amen. Is the vessel does not count. When you go to buy the bread, you don't eat the bread with the plastic. When you go for the restaurant, when you buy the food, you don't eat it with the plate and the cutlery. You eat what is inside because that's what you're interested in. And you eat the rest. Your focus is what is in the plate. Whether the food is well done according to the order, I've done to the order. Oh, this is what is addressing. This cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So do address each other. Man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we focus on what is in the in the container, which is the content than the vessel. So, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what God does through me, your focus must not move away from the one who has chosen the vessel. I'm not better than the one who was not used yesterday. God chose to use me. Today, it's not about he is powerful the human being. It's about God is an almighty God. What a mighty God will say. Hallelujah. This is what he is addressing. This is what he is addressing in the church world. There was groupings. Some people said we belong to Paul. Some people said we belong to Apollos. Some people said Kephas is Peter. We belong to Peter. Some said we belong to Christ. Now who are the correct ones? Is the latter. The one who said, we belong to Christ. The other ones. Where do you belong? 
Don't go to people and tell them. How much please exhort. Exhort the pastor. Exhort the name of the church. That's how the thing results. Because it is not a name of the church that saved lives. It's not the name of the church that heals. It's not the name of the pastor. It's not the kind, right? It's not the house of the saved. It's not the clothes he wears. It's not the clothes he wears. It's not the clothes he wears. It is the Jesus he preaches. Hallelujah. It is also important for this Apollos. It is important for Paul. It is important for Cephas that we do not project ourselves above the one who calls us. We don't sell our names. We don't sell who we are. We don't steal God's prime time. It must not be about us. It's not by about what we have. It must be about who he is and what he has. It's not what we can do. It's what we can do. Why do you believe with that? It is so important that they take from the pulpit. It will help them wherever they are. It will help them wherever they are. Hallelujah. It will help them wherever they are. It is not Paul who was crucified. You were not baptized in the name of Apostle Alfred. Verse 14 says, I thank God that I baptized none of you except. Creepers and Gaius. Lest anyone should say that I have I have baptized in my own name. Why are you baptizing in the name of Jesus? Why are you baptizing in the name of Jesus? Why are you baptizing in the name of Jesus? 16 says, Yes, I also baptize the household of Stephanas. Besides, I do not know whether I baptize any other. He did not deliberately played down water baptism. Because he realized this church. It is about a human being. You know, there are moments when I go to some people to pray for them. And I realize that an anointing oil can be either an offense. So I don't use it. Because I don't want people to run around with some chemicals. Some there are times when there's no anointing oil. By the Spirit of God, I feel led to use water for that particular moment only. But if I continue with water, I'll be like the rest. Because water is unbiblical to you. But I am not going to decide. If he, in the book of I think it's extra nineteen. The Lord says God did unusual miracles through the hand of God. And after he brought to his body, and when he went to the end, he went to the end. But if you watch, God will help him again after that. Because if it continues, the people will find out. And so God can decide. Does it? And then you can decide to say, go ahead and dip yourself in the river seven times. Once, and that's why. But the problem is when we now idolize it, we fall short of the one who 
Hallelujah. And that was happening today. People are around rivers. Because God healed Naman. So they are hiding behind one instant. That God has used a prophet. Once. Because not always. Where are we This is God can move, use a different method and use the same principle. Now we need to understand what a principle is. A principle is what God instructs to be done or how it should be done. But the method, method depends on the Holy Spirit. Amen. And methods are subject to changes. Don't so, mistake a method and a principle. A principle is applicable all the time. And everywhere. Methods are not applicable all the time. And everywhere. That's the difference. That's why if you try it the following day, you must keep the method is repetitive. Then there's no need for faith. There's no need for faith. Faith is on God for a method. Amen. The principle is that God is going to heaven. The power and the knowledge belongs to God. That's why the Lord says knowledge pass up. Knowledge is an enemy of faith. They didn't 
didn't die in sickness. Abazange babe ebuna. Abazange babulawe mabuleki abazange batsuwe. Abazange batagaye in faith. Balu bafa bekholwa. What type of death? Bafa bekholwa. They didn't die though some of them they were murdered. Nanoma banye bawo babulawe. But they were murdered. in faith babula wa bekholwa hallelujah amen the pause abo mpostolu pole we headed over to lions bafa kwa ekumabukeni abatelo mabukeni why they died so they bekholwa they died for what they believed bafa be bekholwa they were killed for their faith babula so therefore they did not die because of the bullet ababula they died for what they believed so they died in faith. jesus did not die because of the sword that pierced his side he died in faith Hallelujah. Amen. It is not a sword that kills. It is not a spear that kills. No one has the power to kill him. The Bible says he gave up his ghost. Amen. There was a time I think I said what matters is how you die. Then I said, don't die in the hands of your enemies. Don't die by the wishes of your enemies. Die by the prophetic word of God. Hallelujah. Peter was prophesied how he would die. Jesus said, do you love me three times? Jesus said, do you love me? It me three times a day. And the then the Bible says when you were younger Jesus said, you went to Peter Peter or Simon wherever you wish. What you went there to but when you get older someone else will take you. Where you do not want. It is where you do not want. Where you do not want. Faith is where God wants. Where God wants. Faith, you know, it, 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 Faith is not what you wish and how you feel. What you like. Faith is when all your senses, all your willpower, have been handed over entirely to God. And you speak like God and say, it's not about how you believe. It is Jesus who will believe. I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. How much of faith are you living for? 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 And how much of the flesh are you living with? Because it's a substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. What controls your life? Is it the things that are seen? Is it the things that are palatable? Is it the old things? What controls your life? What was Jesus saying to Peter? He was saying you were living in the flesh. You were living in the sin world. You were living in senses. You are not living in faith. He says you went where you wished. You did what you liked. But he said the time is going to come. When someone knows. Who is this someone else? It is God himself. When the whole of you. Take you where you. The Bible says it is up there. He says he was meaning the manner in which Peter was going to die. So it is not according to the wishes of him. It is because how God would like to be glorified by his death. Don't die like a fly. Don't die like a commoner. Die like a son of God. Die like a deliverer. Die like a hero of faith. Paul says, it is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. The life that I live, it is Jesus. For I, I was crucified with them. I was buried with them. Now when I rose, it is now him. 
Amen. John says, it has increased. It has increased. Here comes our other topical question. Who is alive? Yes. Yeah. Is it you? Or it is Jesus? That's what we mean by power of the cross. It's a place of guiding. It's not a place of living. It's a place of dying to self and living for Christ. Amen. When you are dying to yourself, no matter what people speak about yourself, no matter how they criticize you, you don't know whom they are talking about. Jesus says, whatever you have done to the least of these brothers, you have done to me. It is him who takes an offense. You are no longer taking an offense. Because you are a dead man. A dead man does not have a chance to doubt, neither to fear. David says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because my want is his want. All I want is what he wants. I die to my lungs and my dislikes. It's not about how I feel. I have to do things against my will. Sometimes you don't feel like preaching to some people. Sometimes you don't feel like praying for some people. Because you are praying for your undertakers. But because he said so, that's what matters. That's the power of the Lord. Someone else will take you. Where you do not want. Here comes another rhetorical question. Have you ever gone to a place which you don't want? Have you ever done things you do not want to do? Have you ever preached a sermon you never wanted? Have you ever prayed for your enemy? Inside of you, say, no! But those who have prayed for them, they have not loved your enemy. Have you ever had someone who has prayed for you? Have you ever talked to someone who criticized you? Are you dead or are you alive? Because the cross is a dying place. It is no longer about me. It is no longer about you. It is no longer about Kephas. It is no longer about Apollos. It is no longer about Paul. It is about Jesus. When you are hanging on that cross, Christ comes through. He will disappear. John says, he must increase. He must decrease. Are you increasing? Or you are decreasing? Dying is decreasing. Until you fade in the light of his countenance. Moses went here and had an encounter with God for 40 days. Hallelujah. Amen. When Moses had an encounter La, um, with God for 40 days, um, the Bible um, says he did not God. know um, that his face died. Um, when um, he came um, out, um, the face um, of um, God um, that um, is um, 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 of his face. Um, that um, that um, is his dying face. That um, is dying. Um, um, that um, that um, very same mountain um, is the same mountain of Golgotha. Um, it's um, the same um, mountain um, of Calvary. Um, That's why Something big happened. And I felt like I must go and confront him. And God said, Leave it. Let it go. You know what it feels? It feels like you are dying. 